Welcome aboard. This is the MATLAB coding course series, How to Sensor with Arduino, part one of two. I'm your instructor, Steve. You can call me heavy hands if you don't know why you're about to find out. Today's question comes from Farad Khan. That's how do I get my Arduino sensor data in MATLAB? The problem here is that we're not finding any real tangible explanations out there to guide us through the process line by line. So the solution is we're gonna break it down right now, how to get your Arduino sensor data in MATLAB. This portion has two objectives. The first is to interface Arduino with MATLAB. The second is to interface a one zero button with Arduino. That's gonna be a digital pin read for part one. The required hardware, you're gonna need an Arduino Uno, Nano, Micro, or whichever controller board you prefer. You have an option to put a prototype shield on it, and you'll also need a half breadboard. Uh, you can definitely remove the positive and minus rails to clean it up a little bit, but that's optional. You're gonna need jumper wires, a 10K OHM resistor, you'll need a button, and some extra breadboard pins are optional if you want those. The required software is going to be MATLAB 2020 A or B or newer. You'll need a couple of tool kits. You'll need the MATLAB support package for Arduino hardware toolbox. That's a definite. You'll need the sensor fusion and tracking toolbox and the instrument control toolbox. These are all going to help you with different commands on your, on your script for the for the sensor in the Arduino integration. As you know, the coding core has three rules. One, we do not rush towards failure. Slow is smooth, smooth is fast. And don't forget to drink your water. All right, let's call this session to order. I want you to activate your brain housing group, open your long range visual scanning portholes and engage your primary weapon system. Here we go. Before we jump into the code, let's talk about the circuit really quick. I've got a drawing here for you to check out. That's your button. You can see the top two are the negatives, the bottom two are the positives. Out of the negative on the left is going into a 10K resistor and then into the ground on the Arduino. And the positive is going straight into the five volt. Opposite side of the button negative is going into the D7 pin and the bottom positive is nothing. That big guy in the middle, that's your button. So once it's on a half breadboard with the rails removed, it's gonna look like this. And these extra pins here are just to prevent the wires from getting yanked out. But there it is, you can see the data is in the blue, the button in the center, the top one has the 10K resistor into the black grounding wire and the red wire goes straight into the 5 volt, that's the power source. Okay, that's your circuit. Let's get into it. Objective one, interface Arduino with MATLAB. Now, if you've never used your Arduino with MATLAB before, you're gonna to come to the command window and you're gonna type Arduino setup and you're gonna press enter and you're gonna run that and you're gonna select your board. So if you're using a nano or a micro, that's the process you go through to make sure that the Arduino knows which board you're using. But since mine knows that I'm using an Uno board, I can skip that part and I can go straight into it with the interfacing Arduino with MATLAB A equals Arduino. And we run. That code is going to come back to us with the variable A is equal to the Arduino board with the following properties. This is the port that I'm in. I'm on a Mac right now, so I'm, this is the port address here for Macs. The board is an Uno, and these are the available pins here. I'm in D7, so I'm right in the middle. These libraries have more to do with the setup portion. This Adafruit BNO055 was from another series, so that's why it's coming up automatically. It's still loaded on my board. So that was our objective one. Not too difficult. Objective two, let's interface the button sensor with our Arduino, and that's gonna be on the digital pin. So let's just say click is equal to read digital pin A D7. So I want my variable click to be equal to the action of reading the digital pin on the Arduino in the D7 slot. So if I go ahead and run that, click is equal to zero, okay. Let's try again. I run. Click is equal to zero. Now, if I go up here and I press the button and I hold it down, 
click is equal to one. These digital pin reads for this sensor is gonna be a Boolean value. It's either gonna be true or false or one or zero, binary, however you wanna look at it. But you're either getting a one or a zero for the actual function of reading the pin itself. So that was very quick to get through both of our objectives, but let's expand on them a little bit. Let's take a serial plot of the button feed. And a serial plot means it's gonna be streaming the data here at a very, very high rate, and we'll be able to see when the button is clicked and when it's not clicked. So let's start with click count is equal to zero as a counting variable. Let's start with click list is equal to an empty matrix. And let's start with click time is gonna be equal to another empty matrix. So this one here is my counting variable for my iterations. This one is going to be what's going on with the, with the pin, the click list, and the click time is gonna keep track of the time of the, whole, of the whole loop. So let's get into the next portion is gonna be while click count is less than 100. I want click count to be equal to itself plus one. So that's gonna give me an iteration counter. And next I'm gonna be going in with click equals read digital pin A D7. Okay, that covers my clicking, whether or not I'm doing anything with that. And next let's fill up some matrices. Let's say click time is equal to a matrix of the click count. And then let's say the click list is equal to another matrix of, let's make that one, what's going on with the button, the click variable. Okay, while this is running, I'm going to want to see what's going on in the command window, so let's just display my click. And if my click count becomes equal to 100, then we're going to display this is the end of the button session. Great, we can end that loop. And this loop, at the end of it, I'm going to want my click time. I'm going to want my click list. I'm going to want my click array is going to be a new variable that is going to be click time of everything and click list of everything. So I'm going to combine them into the click array and I'm going to take the click array and I'm going to make a click table and that's going to be array to table of the click array with the following variable names. Oops names. We're going to have time and we're going to have click where one equals yes. Yes as in the button is being clicked. And we'll close that off there. Okay so our loop let's just comb through it real quick. We have three opening variables. We have the click count, we have the click list, and we have the click time. One is a counting variable and the other two are empty matrices. We have a loop that says while the click count is less than 100, the click count is gonna increase by one for each iteration. And then we're gonna introduce a variable called click, which is gonna be the reading of the digital pin on the Arduino in the D7 slot. That's whether or not the button is being clicked. And then we're gonna take our two empty matrices up there, click list and click time, and we're gonna fill them up. And for the sake of continuity, let's put them in the same order. And while this loop is running in the command window, I'm going to want to display the click variable, what's going on there. And if the click count iteration comes up to 100, we're just going to close out of the loop and say this is the end of the button session. Following the loop, I'm going to capture the click time and the click list from each iteration. I'm going to put them into the click array, and then I'm going to convert the click array into a table. So let's make that table visible so we can see it at the end there. I'm going to clear the command window right now. And let's give this loop 
Let's give this loop a run. I'll hold the button up here so you can see. Running, clicking, not clicking, clicking, not clicking, click, 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 clicking. Okay. 100 iterations passes by and we're given this table and you can see there are just ones and zeros in here for whether or not I was clicking. So you have all of those iterations in an array here. We're just not seeing it, but it, it is there. Right here. 100 by 2. Okay. Okay, so let's say you wanted to know where in that loop the first index that you clicked the button. So in order to do that, we're going to simplify our information a little bit. We're going to say A1 is equal to click time and B1 is going to be equal to click list. That's going to be our X and our Y, just a little easier. And then we're going to say B1 max index is equal to the max of B1. It's going to tell me the first time that it hit the max, which we know is 1. So next we are going to say A1 max is equal to A1 of index. So we're not saying max of A1, we're saying tie the max of B1 to the index in A1. All right, so following that, we're just gonna say display the first clicked index is and we're going to display A1 max. Alright, if we go ahead and run that section, it says 12. So let's take a look at the table. You're not showing me the table? Okay. How about there we go. Zero 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 twelve. There it is. Okay, we are we are in the ballpark. All right. Next, if we wanted to plot this data, we would set up a plot something like this here, and that's going to give us. It's going to tell us the index again, and then it's also going to create a window. And that window is going to show you where your where your click was, that red dot. That's not actually showing. It's probably should say my click line. Yeah, that's better. All right. So if we just make that a little bigger for you. So along the way, right at about number 12, boom, you can see the first click made in a red dot right there. So that's how you would plot it, static. But let's say you wanted to get a little fancier. You wanted to do a serial plot. That you're going to do starting with a counting variable. I'm going to make it a little simpler here. And then we're going to create a new click list variable, empty matrix. All right, so to do serial plotting, we're bringing up that that function that that h h equals animated line animated line is going to be moving on an axis from 1 to 100 and negative 0 0.25 to 1.5 okay whoops let's not forget our wrapping paper okay that line is going to have some properties. So let's say the line style is going to be dotted. And it's going to need a size. Let's say the line width is going to be equal to 3. And it's going to need a color. So let's say the color is going to be equal to just something simple. Let's just say red. Okay, next we're going to give our little serial plot a title and that's going to be button click serial plot okay very good 
title squared away, we're going to need some labels. X label is going to be time. And the Y label, whoops, Y label is going to be click. One equals yes. Okay. Labels are square. Let's go ahead and do a variable for our legend. And the legend is going to be just one item. It's going to be my click. Okay. And now let's do some properties for that legend. The legend location is going to be northeast on the way of the beginning so we can see what happens. Then we're going to have a title. It's going to be a string that says click meter. Yeah, click meter. That'll be good. And then we're going to do a title font size. And that can be 11. All right, following that, we're going to set the background as we've done in our previous plots. GCA is going to be color as a matrix 0 0.45, 0 0.45, 0 0.5 for our charcoal gray background. And we're going to put the grid on. Next, we're going to create a loop. It's going to say while J is less than 100. Oops, J is going to be equal to J plus 1. Now, you got to make sure that your animated line axis property and your iteration counter are consistent if you want to expand or shrink the length of this loop. Okay, click is going to be equal to read digital pin A D7 and click list is going to be equal to matrix. We're going to fill it up now. Click list of J and click. So those were our initial variables up here, you can see. All right, carrying on from there, we're just going to say that if J is equal to 100, and we're going to bust out of this loop with a little display. This is the end of the serial plot. Okay, we can end there. And we can end here. No, we cannot end here. We haven't done anything with our line yet. Derp. We need to say add points of our animated line, which was H, along the x-axis, which is J and about the y-axis, which was click. That's all. And then we're just going to say, hey, draw now. Draw now. Now we can say end. Following that one, we can pop up here. We're not really going to display anything for this one because we're going to be seeing the serial plot. So let's just go ahead and get ready, get my button up here, we'll give it a run. Oops. Let's just let it run through its 10 seconds so that it doesn't get angry at me. Or you know what? Forget it. You're already angry at me. Error in how to button. We have an error in add points. S. There's an S in points. Okay. Let's give it a run. There's our line. Let's give it a press. There we are. And I'm done. You want to do a quick one? Okay, and that's the serial plot. And that's going to do it for digital pin reading. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it.